Coming up on Extended Play, we go to the Game Developers Conference for the latest trends in gaming, go to Japan to see what's new in the arcades, and trick out our spaceship in Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. Stick around, it's game time! Welcome to Extended Play from the Game Developers Conference in San Jose, California. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Kate Patello. GDC is the place where developers get together to show off new technologies, discuss the state of gaming, and support independent developers with an award ceremony at the end. It's a good place to get a sense about games in the year to come. So let's see what's moving and shaking at this year's Game Developers Conference. Who are you and why are you here? I'm Mark Surface. I'm the CEO of GameSpy, and I'm here because Game Developers Conference rocks! <laughs> The Game Developers Conference is focused less on the games themselves than on the tools that go into making the games. And while that may not sound thrilling, there's some technology on display here that can get you very excited about what you'll be playing very soon. Who are you and why are you here? I'm Sanford Russell. I run the Developer Relations Group of NVIDIA. And we're here because this is our big event for the year where the developers come in and learn about what's possible to do for the next year. Without graphics processors, basically you can't move them, the images and the world says uh, as realistically. And so what, what we try to do is constantly come out with technology that makes it look better. So this year, for example, uh, Monsters, Inc. came out with fur. And we're showing off games and, de and demos with fur characters now. Who are you and what do you do? Hi, I'm Paul Hayes from Havoc. We're an Irish company, and we do real-time physics, and we're kick-ass good at it. So in this demo, for example, what we've got is a fully functional ragdoll. So she just threw a grenade, and she's blowing herself up. And the grenade is throwing her into the air, and it's, you know, and it, every time is different. So it's realistic physics. Well, you did a lot of work on Grand Theft Auto 3. I assume you're rather proud that, that that one last night. What would you say was your contribution to that game in terms of your software? Uh -huh. Okay, so what we did, we provided something called RenderWare Platform. That's the, uh, the base graphics architecture that powers Grand Theft Auto 3. So without RenderWare, you wouldn't have anything on the screen. So really, you couldn't run over any old ladies without your help. Exactly, that's what we did. Great contribution to the world. Yes, yes, we're, 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 we're all terribly proud of you. What is this exactly? What is this exactly? It's a fun little game of dodgeball. You remember playing dodgeball as a kid. I don't know if you were the guy that was always getting pummeled in the middle. I was. Oh, you were, okay. Well, I was one of those guys that was pummeling the kids, okay? The most exciting thing that's happening right now is we did an announcement yesterday with Valve, the makers of Counter-Strike, and digital distribution is coming to games. So within a couple of months, uh, we're going to see the first time you will not be going to a store to buy your game on a CD and then come home. You're going to push a button, and within two minutes, you're going to be playing the game that you want to play. So Counter-Strike Condition Zero will be out in a couple of months, and you will just push the button. Two minutes later, you'll be in the game. Do you think graphics can get much better? I mean, they are. They, we, we've, we've hit such a level right now. now. That's a really interesting question. Somebody asked me that question 10 years ago, and I said, no, we've peaked out. We can't get any better. They asked me 90 years ago. I said the same thing. Every single year, I say, we've got there. And every single year, we improve it more and more. It's never going to end. What it's about is making it easy to develop the game, making it quick to develop the game. We can save time. We can put fewer programmers on the project. We can get this game out to the customers quicker, and that makes Everybody happy, the publisher, the developer, us. As we mentioned earlier, the Game Developers Conference likes to honor independent game makers with an award ceremony and a shot at a publishing deal. So for a full list of the winners this year, go to extendedplay.com. And now, game news. While the Game Developers Conference shows off cool stuff that's to come, it also celebrates cool stuff that's already been at the Game Developers Choice Awards. This year, the big, although not too surprising winner, was Grand Theft Auto 3. Boys from DMA Designs and Rockstar were honored for Game of the Year, Excellence in Game Design, and a Game Innovation Spotlight. The other big winner was Sony's Eco, recognized for excellence in level design, excellence in visual arts, and also honored with a Game Innovation Spotlight. Lionhead Studios was also awarded a Game Innovation Spotlight in addition to excellence in programming for the exceptional artificial intelligence of giant cows from peons. Also recognized was a Grand Master, Yuji Naka, head of Sega Sonic Team. He was given a Lifetime Achievement Award for granting us such characters as the Blue Hedgehog and creating such achievements as Fantasy Star Online. In achievements of a more monetary nature, oh, oh, voila. 
Maxis's The Sims has now become the top-selling PC game of all time. Since February 2000, the title has sold 6.3 million copies worldwide. The previous game to hold this distinction was the prettiest adventure game around in 1993, Myst. EverQuest junkies are going to have to pony up more for their fix. Sony Online has raised the monthly rate for playing the game to $12.95 instead of the previous $9.95. Players that already have a subscription will automatically be moved over to the new rates when they take effect April 25th. Coming up on Extended Play, we go to the depths of Deadside in Shadow Man 2 and join the Global Defense Initiative in Command and Conquer Renegade. Monday, get ready for Tech TV's biggest month ever, Tech TV's 2002 Technology Festival. Special reports, new shows, and Tech TV's great gadget giveaway. New prizes and new chances to win every day, all month long. A month filled with amazing innovations from transportation, safety, and communication to medical breakthroughs in the world of sports. You're excited about this one. This is awesome. Tech TV's 2002 Technology Festival. Starting Monday, only on Tech TV. People have a passion for driving. One such person is engineer Chris Marr. For the GMC Yukon XL Denali, Chris and the team paired a 320 horsepower V8 to full-time all-wheel drive for a mix of power and agility found in no other SUV. To quote Chris, who says you can't teach a big dog new tricks? The GMC Yukon XL Denali. Gina? You know, when I was first hired, we didn't have all these fancy integrated systems. Our sales program wasn't even linked with accounting. Warehouse platform in Chicago wasn't linked to anything, not even shipping. Back then, orders took days. Now, they just take hours. Wow, how long have you been working here? A couple of months now. Oh. When software quickly connects all your business systems, that's one degree of separation. That's business with .NET from Microsoft. I'll pay you $100 for 15 minutes work. $100 for 15 minutes work. So IT is fully staffed? Yes, sir. Application development. Hosting. Hello. It's all covered. Need help with your IT outsourcing? EDS. IT outsourcing solved. Like trying stuff out before you buy it? Well, at Best Buy, you can try out all the latest high-tech stuff. Actually, that's half the fun. Best Buy, go ahead, turn on the fun. We were the cars we were promised. The land-based rocket ships with cockpits full of computers and video screens. The cars with shapes we had seen only in our dreams. Where are the cars we were promised? They're closer than you think. Introducing the new Infiniti G35. Welcome back to Extended Play at the Game Developers Conference in San Jose. When the original Shadow Man came out, it succeeded in having a great story and a real creepy atmosphere. But it also had massive undefined levels that were really easy to get lost in, and not lost in the good creepy way. Well, the sequel's here and should be pretty creepy, so let's find out if Shadow Man's second coming has found itself on the PS2. The original Shadow Man flung gamers into a world of New Orleans Joey. magic and the depths of Deadside, where all souls go when they buy the farm. Ah, uh, Deadside. Well, the immortal voodoo Avenger is back, and instead of battling nasty serial killers, this time he's dealing with a group of demons determined to open the gates of hell. Gameplay uses the same innovative two-handed weapon attack system. Mike can have a weapon in each hand, and the L2 and R2 buttons unleash each attack separately, which lends itself to great double-fisted action. Yeah. 
Shadow Man 2's audio quality is excellent. Mike's voice actor has a somberly acidic voice that fits the character perfectly. Well, I reckon I need to go bust a cap in this guy's ass. Like the original game, the ambient noises keep gamers on edge. And the soundtrack rounds the presentation out with an eerie score that mixes jazz tones with macabre melodies. Second Coming does have a few faults. It's too dark, camera issues abound, and it has long load times. However, those who liked the original but found the aimless wandering of it trying will be pleased to note that the Second Coming is more streamlined, not to say that there aren't some puzzling puzzles here. Some of the tasks the Voodoo Queen inflicts on Mike are a bit vague, and there's plenty of trial and error involved in moving the story along. This gritty and incredibly dark adventure into the occult is just the thing for horror fans looking for something smart and offbeat, which is why we give it a four out of five. My mother was a donkey loving strumpet. Shadow Man Second Coming may be remembered less for the game than for a rather questionable advertising campaign they've started in Britain. They're advertising on people's headstones in graveyards. They're referring to it as deadvertising. I have another term. Command and Conquer is considered by many to be the definitive real-time strategy game. Though the latest installment in the series, Renegade, is actually a first-person shooter. You might consider that to be rather unorthodox, but after playing it, we're giving it a nod. What are we looking for again? An imaginary base. Ah, the peaceful life of a soldier in the Global Defense Initiative. Help me! Torn apart by a vicious ambush, courtesy of the Brotherhood of Nod. That's where you come in, playing Uber Commando Nick Parker, a.k.a. Havoc. Command and Conquer Renegade is a first-person shooter based on the popular strategy games of the same name. Finally, players are able to free themselves from the top-down perspective and get down and dirty with the enemy. Westwood Studios has done a remarkable job capturing the feel of the CNC universe, and it certainly is a kick to finally be able to enter all those buildings and poke around. Throughout the single-player missions, you'll also be able to commandeer the many vehicles from both GDI and Nod in order to wreak some serious havoc. But the real shining star here is the multiplayer. Players must defend their base and resources while mounting an assault against the enemy. These bases provide players with items and weapons to use against the other side. The rules of the game are wonderfully simple. Play well, earn credits, and use those credits to buy better vehicles and weapons. Renegade Multiplayer is a masterfully designed gaming experience. It may seem like turning a real-time strategy game into a shooter would be a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest? No. <laughs> I got interest in conflict. But aside from the cheesy one-liners, Westwood pulled it off beautifully. Play the single-player mode and have fun. Play the multiplayer mode and be amazed. We give it a four out of five. As we said, Renegade really is a stand-up because of its multiplayer. If you're only in a single-player action, you might want to give it a pass. Now, Asric's a rather noticeable guy, given that he's half-naked and blue. But here's a cheat code that makes him even harder to miss. Does Asric look like a really dangerous smurf? Try some codes to make him adorable. For big heads, quickly click the right analog stick, press R, down, up, and A. If this trick isn't your thing, repeat the code to disable it. But here's something even more cute. To make his hair funky fresh, note the special music. Quickly press down, right, black and white, click right analog stick, click left analog stick at the same time, press left analog stick right, and right analog stick left, then B, and finally Y. Now that was some serious finger gymnastics. Coming up on Extended Play, we go to Japan to find the latest in arcade gaming and go deep into Tirnanog in Gun Valkyrie. Introducing the 160 horsepower Civic SI from Honda. You'll know it when you see it. 
Think of e-business as a game. You got players, you got management. You got opponents who don't always play by the rules. This game takes strategy and the ability to move that metaphorical ball that is information with more money on the line than in any other game that's ever been played. E-business isn't just a game, it's the game. So if you're going to play, play to win. It was not my dream to realize this day. The day a father watched his daughter start at Juilliard. But I embraced that dream with unwavering attention and made it my own. Because that was the dream of my client. And that's what I do at Morgan Stanley. One client at a time. Starting Monday, Tech TV's Technology Festival blasts off with an amazing week of better living through technology. See how to live longer, love better, and enjoy a healthier, happier lifestyle when all your favorite Tech TV shows show you how to live the good life. Including television's most entertaining technology show, The Screen Savers, weeknights at 7, 6 central. It's Tech TV's Better Living Through Technology Week, starting Monday on Tech TV. Extended play from the Game Developers Conference in San Jose. Our next game, Gun Valkyrie, has had people interested for quite some time. It's the first wholly original Sega game for the Xbox and is made by Smilebait, who gave us Jets at Radio Future. Now, the game's been billed as the Metroid Killer. When you first boot it up, you're going to notice some similarities, but there's definitely enough to distinguish Gun Valkyrie from the classic Nintendo series, especially its difficulty. Originally intended for the Dreamcast, Gun Valkyrie is Sega's first exclusive title for the Xbox. It's beautiful, but it's also pretty complicated. Gun Valkyrie takes its setting from the steampunk world, a blend of early 20th century art and high tech. You play as special ops fighters seeking to defend the colony of Tirna Nol. The game is a third person action title with a futuristic twist, namely, the jetpack. Most of the action takes place in mid-air, so you not only have to be a good shot, you have to do it while bursting and spinning through the air. If this sounds complicated, it is. Both left and right analog sticks are used, including extra functions when you press them down. It'll be tough going at first, but it's a breathtaking journey. The environments are gorgeous, elegant mechanical interiors, and ethereal caverns light up beautifully under fire. The sound effects are tight, from running feet to jetpack boosts. And the excellent music comes from Wavemaster, Sega's primary sound design house. Gun Valkyrie is an eye-catching, solid game that'll put those mad skills you've been bragging about to the test. Prepare for a callus on your gaming thumb, because we give Gun Valkyrie a 4 out of 5. While the control scheme of Gun Valkyrie might not be to everyone's taste, there's one thing we can all agree on, it does look good. Now, once upon a time, you had to go to the arcades to get top-notch graphics, though clearly, you can get even better at home now. So what are the arcade makers doing to compete? Well, we went to the source at an arcade show in Tokyo, Japan, to find out what's being done to distinguish a console from a cabinet. Every year in Tokyo, thousands of Japanese gamers come to the AOU Expo to check out the latest and greatest new arcade games. While some attendees opted for a more analog experience, most were transfixed by the newest digital arcade devices. Arcades in America are becoming more scarce, but the Japanese market continues to do a pretty strong business. American market first, uh, typical mall arcade uh, started diminishing instead the uh, market is shifting toward larger scale arcades such as Excess Orlando, or Gameworks, or Dave and Busters. Games that do well in Japan are almost certain to eventually make it stateside. When we have like uh, driving games or gun games, we decide instantly this game should go to America. 
the best thing for us to do a test in America and ask for uh, impression or other comments. Now that next-gen consoles provide graphics that rival most arcade games, companies have to be more creative in order to get gamers out of their houses. You have to be differentiated from arcade and uh, consumer games. So we make a game like Taiko, the drum game, or uh, we make a Bazan, which is a sword game. Unusual controllers were plentiful around the show floor. Konami plans to bring a couple of unusual controllers to the U.S. later this year. The first is a golf game using sensor technology that responds accurately depending on how hard you swing the club. The other is a pool game that provides a virtual table but uses a real ball and cue stick. Along with creative controllers, some creative games were shown. For example, Dog Station challenges you to raise your digital dog from a puppy. Your success depends on the speed of your typing. The most attention-grabbing title at the show was the much-anticipated debut of Soul Calibur II. Crowds waited endlessly for the chance to battle using brand new environments and updated characters. Soul Calibur II will be showing up in U.S. arcades in June and then later on the home consoles. While arcades may eventually become a thing of the past, for now, it's still a great place to spend your quarters. Coming up on Extended Play, we master Jedi Starfighter to help you win all your missions. Use the Force, Master Gallia. Moo. Everybody's talking about Gateway's stylish flat panel monitors, and now you can get one for yourself when you call 1-800-GATEWAY and ask about the Gateway 500SE. This computer has everything you need, including an Intel Pentium 4 processor, a CD burner, and a flat panel, all for just $9.99. So call 1-800-GATEWAY today and add a little style to your workspace. That's 1-800-GATEWAY. The mother of all fighting games just arrived on PlayStation 2. So prepare your mind, prepare your body, but most of all, prepare for a beating. Virtual Fighter 4. Rated T for team. Want to fight again? in the dust with the Intel Pentium 4 processor. This ordinary looking bed is the key to a restful night's sleep. Even though it may look like an ordinary mattress, it's more comfortable than you can ever imagine. Introducing the Nautilus Sleep System. Nautilus uses variable support chambers designed to let you control the comfort on your side of the bed. Individual remote controls allow you to increase or decrease the firmness on your side of the bed so you can have that feather soft feel and your spouse can get the extra firm support he or she has always wanted. Features like a wool blend pillow top for winter, a silk blend pillow top for summer, and our unique comfort layer make Nautilus the choice for a great night's sleep. It's time you feel the instant comfort of Nautilus with no money down and payments as low as $30 a month. Try Nautilus in your home. We guarantee the best sleep you've had in years. If you're not completely satisfied within 12 weeks, return it for a full refund of the purchase price. Call now for your free video and brochure and discover instant comfort with the Nautilus Sleep System. Coming up on Tech Prime. Tech Live, followed by the screensavers. Technology Festival starts Monday.